You're putting Canadian taxpayers on the hook for a lot of money here. How confident are you that that money will be recouped? How can you so strongly advocate for abortion back home and then come here and put your name to a final communique that avoids the word entirely in watering down the language? During your meeting with the Pope, did you bring up the issue of LGBTQ rights? Uh, given the accusations that you've made in the U.S. court case, has he paid any diplomatic price for this? Because it seems like he was welcomed here with open arms. Are there currently any MPs in your caucus that are named in the NCCOP report to be wittingly or semi-wittingly participants in foreign interference? Are you going to invite Narendra Modi to the G7 in Canada next year if he keeps denying the allegations of his government's involvement in the killing of Hardeep Singh Nijjar and the foreign interference allegations into Canadian elections? With our allies this week here in Italy, we work together to address the many different challenges our world is facing today. With wars in the Ukraine and in the Middle East, with climate change affecting our lives, we need responsible leadership. And this is what Canada is here to offer. We also discussed economic opportunities that will help all of us advance economic development and create good jobs around the world, including in Canada. Summits like these are an important moment to coordinate our efforts with friends and allies, and they matter to Canadians because security, prosperity, and stability benefit of us all. On security, President Zelensky joined us here in Italy this week, and I made it clear that Canada will keep supporting Ukraine until victory. I've long advocated for new and innovative ways to support Ukraine and impose costs on Russia for its invasion. Two years ago, Canada suggested freezing Russian central bank assets. And that's exactly what the G7 did. Now, to bring forward the future interest earnings from frozen Russian sovereign assets, the G7 will provide loans to Ukraine. As the G7 finalizes the delivery of the extraordinary revenue acceleration loans, Canada stands prepared to contribute $5 billion Canadian in funding. These loans would provide Ukraine with approximately $69 billion Canadian as it continues to defend its freedom, sovereignty, and territorial integrity. On top of this, Canada also announced new sanctions on 11 individuals and 16 entities who supply key technology and electrical components in support of Russia's war of aggression. And I also want to mention that we're in the process of delivering four armored medical evacuation vehicles to support Ukraine's armed forces. This is the first shipment of 50 armored combat support vehicles, all built in Canada in London, Ontario. Of course, we know that war is not only ravaging Ukraine. This week, with G7 allies, we also discussed the crisis in the Middle East. Canada is extremely concerned by the scale of the humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza. Canada has been clear on calling for an immediate ceasefire, for the release of all hostages, for a significant and sustained increase in humanitarian assistance, and to an enduring end to this crisis. So far, our country has provided $165 million in humanitarian funding for things like food, water, and medical assistance. We all need peace and stability in the Middle East, Canada will continue to support efforts to achieve a just and lasting peace in the region based on a two-state solution. Climate change is having an impact on food security. So to support vulnerable countries, especially in the Americas, Sub-Saharan Africa and Asia, we're allocating $200 million to the International Fund for Agriculture Development. In the Indo-Pacific region, we're helping mobilize private capital toward climate change mitigation and adaptation projects by delivering a $360 million repayable contribution to the Asian Development Bank. This was a very productive summit. I want to thank again our Italian hosts. We are focused on fairness for everyone, on creating good jobs and economic growth, and Canada will of course continue to be a voice for peace, stability, and democracy. I look forward to the Summit for Peace in Ukraine in Switzerland today and tomorrow, where we'll work with partners on a plan to achieve a comprehensive, just, and lasting peace for Ukraine. And I very much look forward to hosting next year's G7 Summit in Canada, in Kananaskis, Alberta. Next year will be the 50th year since the first summit.
Edward II held in beautiful Kananaskis. Can't wait to share all the glory of the Canadian Rockies with our friends and allies. Je suis maintenant très heureux de prendre vos questions. Thank you, Prime Minister. We'll now begin the media availability. 20 minutes, one question, one follow-up. First question goes to the Canadian press. Hi, Prime Minister. Um, Italy said ahead of the summit that Ukraine and Gaza would be discussed with equal importance. Um, but the G7 leaders announced a clear deliverable with the Ukraine loan, swift action. Why was there no deliverable on Gaza, given the humanitarian crisis you say there is? The uh, G7 leaders are united uh, in wanting to see the implementation of the uh, U.S. and U.N. peace plan, the uh, immediate ceasefire, the return of all hostages. Uh, and we underscored repeatedly the need to continue delivering humanitarian assistance, as we all are. Canada is indeed one of the uh, significant donors to uh, UNRWA and humanitarian aid uh, in uh, the region in uh, the uh, uh, in the crisis, uh, we will continue, including uh, continuing to work with outreach partners like we did in the afternoon uh, yesterday uh, on this important issue. Uh, we need to bring together not just the region but the world uh, in calling for that two-state solution and implementing the steps towards it. And that's exactly what we'll continue to do. Uh, Pope Francis has found himself in controversy uh, recently over using uh, a, a derogatory term to refer to gay men. Uh, during your meeting with the Pope, did you bring up the issue of LGBTQ rights? Uh, we talked about AI, we talked about a, a range of things, but we didn't talk about that. I highlighted that there are uh, important issues uh, that we need to work together on, and uh, we will do that. On the $5 billion loan guarantee for Ukraine, you're putting Canadian taxpayers on the hook for a lot of money here. How confident are you that that money will be recouped? And, and can you talk about kind of the risks of that not happening? Russia invaded Ukraine and has caused uh, billions of dollars worth of damage to infrastructure, to individuals, um, and, 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 and on top of uh, killing uh, too many Ukrainians. Um, we think that Russia should be paying for that, and that's why the a freezing of Russian assets and the uh, use of the profits from those assets uh, to support Ukraine in its fight against Russia is the right thing to do. On the summit that you're going to in Switzerland uh, later today, uh, Joe Biden won't be there. He's going to a campaign event in California instead. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Vladimir Putin's not going to be there. What are your expectations for what could come out of this, and is, is it really going to make any tangible difference to this? Uh, there are close to 100 countries that have chosen to be part of this peace process. Um, we need to see peace and stability in Ukraine uh, as we need to see it around the world, and uh, this is part of the effort that we all uh, undertake to engage. I'm, uh, going to be uh, focusing in particular on the issue of uh, children stolen from Ukraine by Russia uh, who need to be returned. Good morning, Ashley Burke, CBC News. During the interaction that you had with India's Prime Minister yesterday, who initiated that interaction? And you mentioned that there, you said that you need to work on important issues. What are those issues you raised? And what did Modi say in response? I think uh, you can understand I'm not going to get into the details of, of this issue. There's uh, uh, important but sensitive issues that we need to follow up on. Um, but. Uh, this was a, a commitment to uh, work together uh, in, the coming, uh, in the coming times to uh, deal with uh, some very important issues. Did Modi give you any sort of assurance that he will cooperate with the investigation into the killing of a Canadian Sikh activist, and did you raise that? Like I said, uh, I'm not going to get into it further, but there are uh, important issues that we need to, uh, need to work on, and we will. Prime Minister, good morning. Graf Jukani on CBC News. Are you going to invite Narendra Modi to the G7 in Canada next year if he keeps denying the allegations of his government's involvement in the killing of Hardeep Singh Nijjar and the foreign interference allegations into Canadian elections? I can appreciate the keenness with, it, with which Canadians are looking forward to next year's G7. Uh, however, uh, Italy continues to be the president of this G7 for the rest of this year, uh, and I look forward to working with Prime Minister Maloney and all my G7 partners on, uh, on the broad range of issues that we've talked about. I will have more to say about next year's G7 uh, when we assume the presidency next year. Okay, and speaking of Italy, how can you so strongly advocate for abortion back home and then come here and put your name to a final communique that 
avoids the word entirely in watering down the language, and will you raise this with Georgia Maloney in your upcoming bilateral meeting? There are clear commitments in the communique to uh, defending sexual and reproductive rights. Uh, there, uh, there is important work that we are going to continue to do. Obviously, this matters uh, deeply to Canada and Canadians, and we will continue uh, to defend uh, sexual health and reproductive rights, as well as uh, women's rights, uh, as well as LGBT rights, uh, everywhere necessary. Prime Minister Brian Platt with Bloomberg. Um, Prime Minister Modi was invited here. He played a pretty prominent role yesterday. He was center stage in the family photo. Given the accusations that you've made in the U.S. court case, has he paid any diplomatic price for this? Because it seems like he was welcomed here with open arms. Um, I think there is a uh, clear understanding uh, that uh, we need to continue to engage across uh, and around the world with uh, various partners, even as we highlight uh, challenges, as we stand up for the rule of law and uh, the principles that drive the G7, uh, we need to engage with a broad range of partners, and that's exactly what we did during the outreach session yesterday. Uh, I also wanted to ask you about um, French President uh, Macron has, has talked about building a coalition of countries to put trainers in Ukraine, military trainers potentially. What is Canada's view on that, and have you talked about that with the French president? Um, during this G7, we had many conversations about uh, Ukraine, about how we need to continue to hold uh, Russia to, its, to account uh, for its illegal invasion, uh, to make sure that Russia actually pays uh, for the damage that it has done uh, to Ukraine, uh, the uh, murder of so many uh, civilians. Um, we're going to continue to make sure Ukraine is held to account. Uh, sorry, Russia is held to account for what it's doing in Ukraine. Hi, Mr. Trudeau. Mackenzie Gray with Global News. Are there currently any MPs in your caucus that are named in the NSICOP report to be wittingly or semi-wittingly participants in foreign interference? The issue of foreign interference is one that this government has taken incredibly seriously since 2015. We brought in the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians over the objections of the Conservative Party and indeed uh, the strenuous resistance of the Harper government for years. Uh, we brought in uh, a, a renewed NSIRA uh, for oversight over our, our uh, national security instances and we created specific uh, bodies of experts, of top civil servants, to ensure the integrity of our elections. Uh, we've also uh, called a number of different reports, including an ongoing report on foreign interference uh, that, is, uh, that we're working with uh, right now to see how they can follow up on the NSICOP report. We've heard from Mr. Singh and Ms. May. They have both said that there are no members of their party who are named in their report. So I'll ask you again, are there any current Liberal caucus members named in the NSICOP report that are wittingly or semi-wittingly participants in foreign I, I will allow Mr. Singh and, uh, and uh, Ms. May to speak for themselves. Last question. Uh, hi, it's Annie Bertrand Oliver with CTV National News. Just going back on that, but why can't you say any more? Singh and May have both talked about this report um, and provided substantially more details than you have. So why are you unable to provide any details about what is in this NSICOP report? I think it's important that Canadians have confidence in uh, our ability collectively as a democracy to defend the institutions and uh, the processes around our elections and our democracy. That is why officials are engaging with uh, the foreign interference inquiry to see uh, how they can uh, follow up on the uh, NSICOP report. You're talking about how Canadians should have confidence in the work that's being done around foreign interference and to prevent that from happening, but Dominic LeBlanc, your own minister, has said that the government disagreed with the committee's interpretation of some of the intelligence. So what, is, what are some of the problems with this intelligence, and do you agree with that assessment? Uh, we made clear uh, some of the concerns we have with uh, the way uh, the NSICOP did, uh, drew its conclusions. Uh, I think that is an important part of the process. Uh, the NSICOP, uh, the National Security Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians, uh, exists so that parliamentarians from all parties can have full access to the work that our national security agencies are doing. That's an important step that wouldn't have happened uh, if uh, the Conservative Party had uh, remained in power. We were able to create that uh, over 
the objections of Pierre Polyev and the Conservative Party. Uh, so we welcome the work that they're doing, but of course when it comes to intelligence, uh, there, are, um, there are important uh, bodies like uh, the Foreign Interference Inquiry uh, that is tasked to uh, look at this, and we will continue our work with them. That concludes today's press conference. Thank you, Prime Minister.